Wonderful. We're starting a new mimer today. <clears throat> a new mimer. With God's help, we finished the um, the discourse in Chuti Torah, talking about the Tzorat, <clears throat> and how Mashiach is going to bring a totally a different level, which is above Ratzi Veshov, and unite both of them together so that they'll be also an exciting world and a spiritual world and a holy world. And the world will be out of this world and in this world. Everything will be together. All the highlights will come to reality. The coin and the levy will be together. And the fire with water, <clears throat> Gavura with chesed. Everything's going to be this tremendous working together, unity. <clears throat> Never been anything like it. Okay, now we're going to learn another one. This was written, was said by the Rebbe of Chabad, the Rebbe, the present Rebbe, Melech HaMashiach. Picture. Shiavovi Galenu, Bimhera, now. And this was said by the Rebbe in 1979. And was printed again in a booklet in 1989. And it's based on a sentence in the, by the prophet Micha. Prophet Micha, where is it? Micha, seventh chapter of Micha. And Micha makes this prophecy. And he says, just like the days of your going out of Egypt, I will show you miracles. Who is I? God. God is speaking through the prophets. We're saying, just as the days when you left Egypt, I will show you miracles. <clears throat> and just to remind everybody again, that this is the basis of the Jewish people. Is God exists, and God is the creator of the universe. <clears throat> That's the fourth of the Ten Commandments. Right? Ten Commandments, the Jews are supposed to rest on, because God created the heavens and the earth. <clears throat> So that's the ten, and also God took us out of Egypt, <clears throat> first of the Ten Commandments, <clears throat> and God gave us the Torah. That's how do you say to be taken for granted? It's God speaking, giving the Torah. He's saying, "I am God. Here I am. I took you out of Egypt. I'm the creator. I'm creating you right now. You feel you're being created? No. Okay, so let's start with something easy. I'm the one that took you out of Egypt." So God is saying that he's involved in the world. He cares. He changes things. He makes things happen. And when God makes things happen, there can be three ways. Either nature, all of nature, that's making God making everything happen. Or he can do it in revealed miracles, big, amazing miracles like going out of Egypt. Or he can do it in secret miracles, What's that's miracles like Purim, something like Hanukkah, miracles that are more explainable according to nature, right? But the miracles that happened when they left Egypt, those are not explainable. They're only deniable. You can only like deny it, right? The Jewish people say they split the sea, didn't happen. They said that there was 10 plagues, never was such a thing, didn't happen, right? Didn't happen, it was all made up, Moses made it up, something like that. So these are, those are the miracles, miracles. But then, in the, when the Mashiach takes us out of Egypt, takes us out of, out of the exile, there's going to be a new type of miracles that wasn't, never been experienced. Something higher than nature, something higher than hidden miracles, revealed miracles. It'll be a whole different type of miracles, but we'll see them. And that's what it says, like the days of going out of Egypt, I will show you miracles. It doesn't have to say, I will show you miracles, just say the days, just like the days of going out of Egypt, you will leave again. You will again be redeemed. Something like that. What God says, like the days of... <coughs> okay, so we have to remember the Jewish religion, if you want to call it religion, it's a religion, Eshdat. The Jewish religion is based on miracles. That's the foundation, that God does miracles. 
And therefore, it's not surprising that a lot of Jews have left Judaism because they don't see any miracles and they don't believe there were any miracles. The fact is there's miracles all the time. Just the fact that the Jewish people still exist, that's, a, that's a, an amazing miracle, perhaps the greatest miracle of all. After all this, and we were 2,000 years, no, no army, no nothing, scattered all over the world, and we're still Jews. We know we're Jews. <coughs> but in any case, the, the basis, the foundation, the axiom of Judaism is God does miracles for the Jews. We are God's chosen people. That's what it says in the Bible. I did not make this up. You can take it to God. I didn't create the world either. God made this up. He was the one who's creating the world. He's creating you. He can say whatever he wants to. <clears throat> That's what he said. If it was up to me, I wouldn't say such a thing like this. Makes too much trouble. Let's just be friendly with everybody. But it doesn't work because God said it. And therefore, it, you can't get out of it. You No matter how much you try to deny it, which that's the basis of the, the state of Israel. Then There's no God. We're not special people. Leave it alone. We're like everybody else. But it doesn't work. Because it's a fact. It's true. And everybody reminds us of the truth. It says the Rebbe that the fact that the Jews got out of Egypt and there were big miracles, and that's the basis of Judaism, and God does miracles, and he did miracles, and that the whole fact that there's Jewish people today is a living testimony of the miracles of God that he did when he took us out of Egypt, and etc. Okay, that's what God does. <clears throat> what about what are we supposed to do? What are we supposed to just believe and just, just believe and do what you're told? Right, I just say, whistle while you work. <clears throat> just do it. So the Rebbe is going to say it's a little bit deeper than that. That really this new future redemption, this thing that's going to happen, that depends on us. <clears throat> we have to be God's partners. And if necessary, God will inspire us very aggressively, not forcing us, not forcing us, he will inspire what's inside of us. He won't make a new thing, he'll hypnotize us or something. He'll reveal, God will reveal this fact that we are his chosen people and we are his sons, etc. All these things, he'll reveal it. But nevertheless, however it is, it depends on us and it ends up being hard work and making some very, very difficult life decisions. Right? Very difficult life decisions. I took a few classes in, in addiction. And the addictions in general, the drugs and this, I took a few other class. And for a person, to, a genuine addict, to stop being an addict, right, it's almost impossible. Almost impossible because it's his nature and he's going against his nature and everything is, seems there's no other alternative. And that's the way we are. <coughs> almost impossible. But God is expecting us to do it and we can do it and he'll, he helps us to do it. So let's go. Says the prophet Micha. Just like in the days when Mich was in the first temple, right? This was like 2005, six, something like years ago. Seven, 2,700. You made just like the days when you left Egypt. I will show you miracles. So this is promised to us. We are going <clears throat> to have the future redemption. Just like Moses took the Jews out of Egypt, Mashiach will take us out of all the troubles we're in now. Or maybe Kavakrish Morichami Admar Bamaimar Divra Maskoze and the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe. He brings a this, this, this title, this sentence he brings to explain this prophecy of Micha, that just like the days, key, you may like the days that you left Egypt, I will send you. I will show you miracles. The previous Rebbe brings in a mimer. This is in 1948. Tavshen Previous Lubavitcher Rebbe. Picture. Rabbi Yosef Yitzchak. There were seven Rebbe's in Chabad. Right? The first one wrote the Tanya. That's what we, and he also wrote <coughs> the Lakuti Torah that we're learning in the morning. That's the first one. And the, the seventh one is the Rebbe I just showed you. And this is the sixth Rebbe. This is his father-in-law, Rabbi Yosef Yitzhak. 
<clears throat> and they bring what it says in the Zohar about the sentence. Shenem, <clears throat> like it says, it says, like the days of your leaving Egypt, I will show you miracles. <clears throat> doesn't have to say that. It could have said, like you left Egypt, I will show you miracles. What do you mean like the days you left Egypt? And not only that, they didn't leave Egypt in days. They left it in one day. There was one day, they all left Egypt. That's Passover. We're going to celebrate it. It's not, they didn't leave Egypt in two days. There was a lot of Jews. It should have taken a few days, but it didn't. <clears throat> it says that no slave ever escaped from Egypt. In the history of, of Egypt up to that time, and when the Jews got it, one day, there weren't three million people out of Egypt. 600,000 just men, the number of men that left from 20 and up was 600,000. Was, was 600, and that's not counting the children. How many children were there? Probably more. How many women were there? An equal number, right? Maybe more also. In any case, they left about 3 million people, something. <clears throat> they left in one day. So what does it mean? In like the days of your legion leaving Egypt. I will show you miracles. The big miracles were when they left Egypt. Maybe Kadush Moriad Morchami says that it says, what does it say? You may, the days, like the days you left Egypt. Of course, you can say like, you know, the, the general time, all those days that they left, you know, they left, it was a splitting of the sea. What, the Zohar doesn't say that though. The Zohar, Zohar was a book written by Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. Despite what the professors say, non-religious, but it was written by Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, <clears throat> something like one, <clears throat> excuse me, 1,800 years ago. So. Kabbalah book. It says like the days you left Egypt. Plural. Hari Yitzhiz Mizrahim Ayusab Yom Echot. It says that going out of Egypt was on one day. Bechad Zimna Nafka. It says in one day they all left. That's the question of the Zeramek. The Cain also, Bezichiris Gu'ulis Mizrahim. Also, when we have a commandment to remember going out of Egypt every day, it says, Lamantis Koran, that you should remember at Yom Tzaytcha. The day you should remember the day that you left Egypt. Right? We, the, the, we celebrated big time once a year in Passover, but really you're supposed to remember it every day. Like we say, it's, that's the basis of Jewish with when you make Kiddush, every time you make Kiddush, every holiday, every Shabbat, all of our prayers. <coughs> remember going out of Egypt. Right? We remember going out of Egypt. When we go out of Egypt, one day. What does it say over here? Why does the prophet Micha say like the days of going out of Egypt? In the previous Rebbe, he explains that all of the days, from that day, the Yetzir Mitzrayim that we left Egypt, until the future redemption, they are they are the days of leaving Egypt. Now, what is this future redemption? thing that we're talking about. This is all, Chabad is <clears throat> focused solely on this, the future redemption. Chabad from the first Rebbe, Judaism is really should be faced, should be concerned only with this. The future redemption, what's the future redemption? The future redemption, when, when the Jews were in Egypt, so they, they simply couldn't be like Jews. They couldn't do Jewish things. They couldn't do what God wanted them to. They had to do what Paro wanted. Paro said to the tote that barge, lift that bale, whatever it is, build that sphinx, put a, 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 a 10,000 pound rock, lift it up on your back. You have to do it. You got no choice. You have to do what he says. You got to say, just one second, I got to put on tefillin. I want one minute, I got to, I didn't finish chakras. I didn't finish davening. There's no such thing. You were servants of Paro. Now we left Egypt. We're not servants of Paro anymore. No more Paro, right? Who are we servants of? That's the problem. <laughs> That's the problem. Who are we the servants of? Ideally, we're supposed to be we're the servants of God. God took us out of Egypt, 
And now we do what's right. We do what God says. But there's someone in the middle. Who's in the middle? Ourselves. What they call in the, in Natanya, the animal soul. The animal soul, that's me. That's you. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know you, but if that, that's the animal soul. Our animal soul says, no, I'm free. I'm the boss. I am the boss. And, and which is okay. I mean, that's natural. That's a natural, healthy, normal person. That's the way he is. But the Jews have to be above normal. And the Jews are very rarely, rarely above normal. Very rarely. It says this, there's one in every generation called the complete tzaddik. That's a, ter, that's a person that's uh, the way a Jew is supposed to be. And we don't get that. When the future redemption, every Jew will be above normal. Every Jew. And from that, the whole world will be above normal. No one will go after their lower passions and desires and, and depressions and whatever the aggressions and things like that. And on the other hand, everyone will be free to inspired to do good. There'll be new music, there'll be new friendship, there'll be new a happy world, there won't be suspicion, there won't be people will be able to be themselves, the good self. Some people don't even believe they have there, there's any good in them. But the fact is there is. Maybe there's some people that. <clears throat> Genu okay. So that's what it means. The days we're, we're waiting for this thing when everybody is just aware <clears throat> and serving and connected to the creator. Uh, the healthy world. We talked about this a long time. From the day that we left Egypt, which was 3,330. Eh, how does it go? 30. Something eight years ago. I have to make the calculation. Anyway, <laughs> we got out on three, four, four, eight. We got out three, four, four, eight. Let's make a calculation over here. Why, why should we? Here we got. We got on three, four, four, eight. And now it is five, seven, eight, two, right? Five, seven. Is that right? No, two, two. Oh, sorry, two, four, four, eight. Eh, I made a mistake. Two four four eight, right? So that was exactly four seven three three, right? Three 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 four. Uh, three thousand three hundred and thirty four years ago, we left Egypt. Ne next week, we'll be we celebrating. Three thousand three hundred thirty four years ago, we got out of Egypt. Look, and therefore it says since then. Every day since then, I'll multiply that number, 3334, three, by 365 days in the year. So you, you do the calculation. That's it. Every day has been going out of Egypt. <clears throat> every day we've been, oh, so it's, we've got to do something. Oh, here. Now it says that God is not going to do everything that we have been going. We've got to take ourselves out of Egypt. <clears throat> 3,330. God took us out of Egypt one day. And we have to do it 3,334 days. Let's just for the for the sake of uh, of um, didactics or whatever it's called. Let's let's make the calculation. How many, how many days is this? Here we go. We got ready three 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 four times times if uh, 365 365 equals Oh, 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 1,216,910 days. Uh, one, remember that number, 1,216,910 1, days. Check it out, see if it's right. That's the number. 1,216,910 days we've been going out of Egypt every day. That's why it says, Kiyamei, like the days of going out of Egypt. All of these days since then, all these 1,200,000, whatever <coughs> days, they've been days of miracles, big miracles. And God is going to show us even a greater miracle when we leave all this totally and we become who we're supposed to be. Who, okay, Mitzrayim, what is this idea? But what's, why leaving Egypt? Why do, why do we keep picking on Egypt? Come on, what's wrong with Egypt? 
Right? The Egyptian people, they're okay. What's wrong with the Egyptians? Right? Say the people, Syrians, they made a lot of trouble for us. The Egyptians also, right now, the Iran is, oh, going out of Iran. That would be good. What, what's wrong with the Egyptians? For 3,000 years, we've been, we've been defaming the Egyptians. Why? Says the Rebbe, because Egypt, Mitzrayim, is made Saragabal. Not only that, Egypt today is a totally different Egypt than it was back then. Totally different, with, with totally different ideas, actually totally different people. It says when Nebuchadnezzar came, he conquered the whole world. He moved everybody around. So that the people who live in Egypt today are not the same Egyptians that were back then. Nebuchadnezzar was like in the in the 150 years before the destruction of the... T- no, I'm sorry. I mean, he never, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Bo, not Nebuchadnezzar. Bo Sanhedrin. <laughs> Sanhedrin. Wait. Sanhedrin. Sanhedrin. He was like 150 years before the destruction of the first temple. Sanhedrin. And he conquered the whole entire world. Sanhedrin. He didn't conquer Israel though. Sanhedrin. And he the, 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 the conquered the world and he moved everybody around. So the Egyptians there today are not the same Egyptians. And even if there were, they're totally different ideas with religions. They're totally different. What is Mitzrayim? Why do we keep mentioning Mitzrayim? The Torah also keeps me. That is from the language of Meitzar, limitations. Limitations and boundaries. False limitations and false boundaries. The Indian Yetzirah Mitzrayim going out of Egypt. It's going out of all of our false identities, false definitions of the world. <clears throat> Inhibiting I think that inhibit the good inside of us, conceal the good inside of us, deny the good inside of us, that make us slaves of paro, that we can't be who we are. We're slaves to money, we're slaves to our passions, we're slaves to our worries, our fears. <clears throat> right, we're slaves to our, our obsessions. Slaves, we can't be happy, can't just live a meaningful lives. That's what it means. Made We're going to see this is this is the big thing of, of the Jews. Big thing is it's to go out of limits. God purposely made the world nature natural, concealing God purposely so that we'll do call what's called avodah work. Even going out from the limitations of the highest, that all these days, they are called they're the days when we're leaving Egypt. Every single day, we leave our limitations, higher and higher and higher limitations, more and more refined limitations. And until until we get a big gift from God. And God brings us the, just like he did when we left Egypt, the future redemption by means of the Mashiach. That's going to be the idea of the Mashiach. Mashiach is going to be a person that's going to be able to awaken in all the Jewish people. And then after that, in the whole world, their true identity. We're creations of God. God is creating us all the time. Every Jew is the son of God. Every human being is the handiwork, the precious, how do you say, the precious uh, handiwork of God. Then everyone will go out of all of their limitations and we will be what we were meant to be. Simple language, the world will be healthy. We'll go out of the, 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 the highest most refined restrictions will go out. The Mashiach, then in the Mashiach, and it is what we will stop being the slaves, not only of Paro, of the world, we'll stop being slaves of ourselves, and we'll start being slaves, servants is a better word, but still of, of the creator of the universe. He's, he's, he's creating us, right? <clears throat> That's what it says about Mashiach. It says, It says by the Mashiach, <clears throat> it's a, it's a in, in Micha, the prophet Micha it says the the porets the the how do you say the 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 breaker through will come before them. The one who will break through the boundaries, icebreaker, peritzat kol gedorim, that the Mashiach will break all of the false limitations of the world. He'll do away with all religions. 
Uh, all the religions that stress how, how terrible this world is and how good the world to come is, is the Mashiach will break through all that. Right? This world, through the world, is a terrible place. One of the things that's terrible about it is all these religions. That's one of the, <laughs> that's one of the terrible things about it. <clears throat> but the fact is, is that without these religions, people would really be, you know, they would really, they would be like it is in America now, right? And every, there's no men, there's no women, there's no good, there's no bad, there's no up, there's no down. Every, every, every you can't say every man for yourself, every, you know, breathing, cognate, whatever they call it, for himself. <clears throat> in any case, so the, the, in a way, the religions are good, but they're, they're false uh, boundaries because why? Because the person's always living in this fear that you know, step on a crack, you break your mother's back. You got all these false ideas of you know, you're going to go to hell if you don't do this, you know, that, and it takes a person's mind off of the creator. The person's always thinking about himself. What's God going to give to me, and what's God going to punish me? With? So, a person has to think about the, what God wants and what the world needs. And that's what Mashiach is going to bring. The Mamshiach, but Mimer, the previous Rebbe, he continues in his Mimer that he said in 1948, <clears throat> so, so we have to every day go out of Egypt, higher and higher and higher, more and more refined, less and less egotistical, less and less egotistical. Until finally we realize <coughs> that we're ready, we're, we're vessels, come on, Mashiach, just do it. You know, take us out of this quagmire that we're in, this terrible quicksand, which is called the world. Stop the tests. That's what it means. It'll break through all the li limitations. We'll realize how truly infinite we are. Sometimes you get a little taste of this infinity in the world. Now you can see, right? Like, for instance, love. Right? Parents love their children. That's something infinite. That's an infinite thing. It's not limited to any sort of, you know, how do you say, calculations, limitations. Women love their children. Men are supposed to also, I don't know how that works, but men would. Love of two, true love we're talking about. You love somebody just because of that, who that person is, not because of what you get from it. People love their wives, even if their wives, they're the, God forbid, one of the partners, a man or wife, one of them has Alzheimer's. Nevertheless, they still want the partner that's healthy, loves the other one. It gets absolutely nothing. But sometimes they don't, but nevertheless, there is free love. There, there is a true love. You want to call it free love. Free love means you, you don't get anything from it. You don't receive anything. And you just love the other person because of who the person is. That's a form of infinity. Sometimes you can see, hear beautiful music. You can hear, hear these things that are like above time they're above it's it's a form you see a little bit of a beauty about the sunset or something about a flower of it little glimpses you can get that there is of this harmony and beauty and good that exists in the world but that's absolutely nothing compared to what the Mashiach is going to reveal he's going to reveal the source of all this well mom sheikh by mimer continues in the mimer that ran on flow that what he says that he, Mashiach will show us god says i will show you miracles through the Mashiach as Kaya, La Gilo, the Gula, Tita, this is referring to the future redemption. Shagula, Tita, this future redemption will be also in this level. <clears throat> Madrega. Out of any limits. Ella, Baj, Shehi, Madrega, Nihilus, Yosef. But this is the highest level. Now we have to go out of our limitations. God helps us. But the future redemption is going to be a big, you know, whole jackpot. Yesh Lomar, we can say, that what it says, that I will show you miracles. This refers on the redemption of the future, future redemption. I will show you. When is God saying, I will show you miracles? Why? This is only to explain more the reason, it says, like the days. Why does it say like the days of going out of Egypt? In other words, we said every day since back then, 3,300 years of days every day. And then in the, finally, God is going to show us this future redemption. <clears throat> Even though that the real <clears throat> obligation 
to remember going out of Egypt is only one day. Yom Yechid. He may cave in the sense Shemadabah that was speaking about the Gula Tira, the future redemption, and run on the flow that will show you big miracles. Sha'az then, Tiyeh, Shlemos Yitzhiz, the complete, total leaving of any sort of restrictions to serving the Creator. Hayatziyah, Mikolam Mitzorim, leaving any boundaries or limitations or obstacles. Gamia Mitzorim, Vagavulus, Haking, Nalim, even of the highest levels of, how do you say, uh, obstacles or, or, or <clears throat> um, pessimism, right? The, mo the most refined levels of <clears throat> disability will go out of, in order to, in order to, but in order to get this revelation, how are we going to get this amazing revelation? We have to be ready for it. <clears throat> Remember, like we learned in the Mimer about the tzor, Tzorat, you have to make vessels. In order to get to this level, you have to have going out of Egypt every day. Oh, that's, that's a little bit difficult. Every day, 1,216,910 steps. <laughs> Write a book about it. 1,216,910 easy steps to come to the future redemption. I don't think anybody would buy that book, but that's it. That's that's where we're at. That's where we're at. But don't worry, because we've already been through well over 1,216,900 of them. Maybe we have 10 more to go. But in any case, maybe we only have one more. I don't know. But we have to go through these steps. Shabakal yom that every day, yotzim you have to go out, me matzarim nalim from higher, more refined types of limitations. Lochen therefore it says may like the days of going out of Egypt. We have to go out of Egypt every day, in order to receive this amazing revelation in the future. Kia inyan the yotzim mitzrayim, because this whole idea of going out of Egypt. She'al yado, that we have to do every day, that by means of it will come the future redemption. Who is Hayatsiya Mimitzrayim Apam Rishona? It means going out of Egypt the first time, when the first day. The problem is every day has to be that day. Shagam Zen no that the first day also. Simple, let's take simple meaning. You have to remember that back then, 3,300, whatever it is years ago, God took us out of Egypt. That's what we have to remember. That Remembering that one day, that is going to give us the power to do it every day. Because this idea of going out of Egypt, that through it will come this future redemption. <laughs> this is going out of Egypt. I think I went back. Okay, the palm reshown the first time. Shagam said that this is also relevant to the future redemption, like it said in the Mimer, that in the future, when we left Egypt, what was the big thing going out of Egypt? That just started the process. That's just number one. We still got 1,200,000 going out of Egypt to go. What's so big about the first day? It says, because the first day, nitchadesh, kalalat inyan agaula, this re invented the whole idea of Gula in the world. Gula in the world. <clears throat> it's like, let's say that the, there's a, the, the first car, right? You want to go from, from New York to California. How do you go? You walk, you take a, the, you take a, a, a horse, it'll cut down the time, let's say one Instead of it taking you a month to go across America, two months, it'll take you ahead. Somebody says, you know, there's a new thing called a car. What's a car? I invented a car. A car? What is a car? Shows you a whole new thing. You couldn't believe it. You don't, you don't have to move. You just sit there. You turn a little thing, and it just goes. You just have to make sure it goes in the right direction. It goes. 
once in a while you put in gas. This is an incredible thing. A, a car. How do what is it? It was in, how long now does it take to go across? Well, it's you know it's an old car from back then. Where a car, the car only goes like you know ten miles an hour. It breaks down, so it takes you know two weeks to go across. By foot, it takes two months. This takes two weeks to go across. Two weeks that that's an, an incredible thing. So, but two weeks is a long time. It's still a long time, and it breaks down all the time. There's going to be all sorts of difficulties. But the fact is, the big day is the first day when there's a car, a new thing, a car. Nobody. The same thing. The Jewish people were a Jewish people. All of a sudden, God makes this new thing in the world, a car, ex gula, redemption. All you have to get on, you can go out into new levels you never thought about. You realize who you really are. A whole new thing. I, it takes a long time from the time you leave in this car called redemption to get to the end. But the fact of the matter is, is you're in a new vehicle. And first of all, you can get there. You can get to your destination. You can get there faster. But it takes time. But the main thing was that first day when God invented this thing called Geula. This opened up the, the pipe to Geula, redemption. We have a new means of transportation. And this opened up the possibility there could be a redemption a going out of limitation, which essentially was what happened all the other times since we left Egypt. Here the Rebbe says it's happened one, it has to happen one million, two hundred thousand times every day. Okay, essentially what this means is, is that God made it known you can come close to God. And God made it known that the God you come close to is not like all the gods that all the other religions and other nations, whatever, believe in. <clears throat> Our God is creating the world. Every instant of the world is an incredible miracle. Every instant of time, every minute of life, every, <clears throat> every fiber of our being, of our consciousness, it's an amazing miracle. And we can, when we realize that we, we realize what a big miracle we are, we're all supermen. Uh, what was that thing I remember as a child? They had Superman. It came from Krypton. No, no, yeah, no, no, yeah, kind of, <laughs> planet of Krypton. I forgot, planet of Krypton. Came from, a, a guy from another world, uh, the Underveld. You know, nobody knows what he is. He can jump. He can see. He can go. He can break. He can heal. He can do everything. Right, another world. But the fact of the matter is, is that every human being is from another world. Every human being. And the Jews, the, what's the other world? The creator of the universe, the creator of Krypton. <laughs> right? The creator of Superman. And we're all, here we are. We're, we're, we can make this whole world into another world. That's even a bigger miracle. That's what we learned in the previous Mimer, if you remember. <clears throat> that God promised we're going to do, everybody's going to do tshuva. And also, when God created the world, he put in the world, the he wants the world to be brand new. He said that, that the world bring, being brand new, that's even higher than people being brand new. In any case, this going out of Egypt, Egypt, what the Rebbe wants to do is that we should look at the world and not take the world for granted. Don't say, this is the way it was, this is the way it's going to be, and don't throw me a cup, I just want to have a good life and don't with this gula and this redemption and this crazy just leave me alone i just want to be quiet and have a good the Rebbe says no way that this is i'm telling you what the truth is the truth is this world that we're looking at is false what the world that we're seeing is not really what the way the world is supposed to be this physical world we're not talking about going to heaven we're talking about transforming this world into infinitely higher and more exciting and more pleasurable if you want to call that if that's what you're after then, because what's the pleasure? We can serve the Creator every moment of our of our being. So that's the idea of going out of Egypt. So we have to do our part every day. We have to go out of Egypt. We have to take from the power of that first day of going out of Egypt, and we have to take from that what do you say? The direction, the awareness that we're going somewhere. There's somewhere to go to. That's what we got out when we left Egypt. The the Jews in Egypt never thought they could go out. They thought that said that they're slaves. That's it. That's who they are. Their dream in life was just that they would find enough straw 
to make their bricks that day, and they, 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 they would get the min, they wouldn't get beaten. That's it. They would live to see another day. That was their whole life. That was their dream. Right? All of a sudden, Moshe came and said, "That's that's not the real world. That's not." This is going out of all of the limitations. After leaving Egypt. So, but call Yom, that every day, you can go out from higher and higher limitations. Until you finally reach the Gula Tira, the future redemption, with that, God is going to do himself. Then will be Yetzir Mitzrayim. They'll be the ultimate, complete going out of Egypt from all of the limitations. But there is more, and what the, what more there is, we're going to learn, God willing, tomorrow. Tomorrow morning, we'll have a class, and we'll continue the mimer. Huh? We'll continue the mimer. We'll learn this. God willing, we'll finish before Passover. Beautiful mimer. <clears throat> now we'll learn the sicha of the Rebbe. Sicha of the Rebbe about Pesach, Passover, Pesach. Stay with us. <laughs>